What's the fellow gardeners on Bubba and this is a Bermuda deck profile. <laughs> it's a uh, day or deck four of the deck profile blitz because I apparently can't do days for the life of me, so you know we got that going for us. So we're doing good. But anyway, so this is my coral deck, which is a deck that I have not showcased. And like I've never showcased it. Because yeah, Pacifica, Shushu, Prisms, Duos for some reason. But yeah. So yeah, this is a deck that I haven't shown yet and it's a lot of fun, and what else did it really say? Deck's a lot of fun. I think it has some real potential to actually like keep up with some of the other Bermuda decks. And yeah, I'll just jump straight into it and show it to you guys. Not really all that much to say. It's something I've been recently tinkering with. So, yeah. Starter is first lesson Akari. So, there are people, I have seen deck profiles of corals, that do run the uh, grade zero coral. I'm personally opposed to that solely due to the fact that the way I want this deck to run, um, I'm going to abuse the heck out of Lyrica to use her skill like four or five times in a turn if I can to filter the deck. So in that sense, I don't really feel the need to use the grade zero coral solely due to the fact that this helps me keep reusing Lyrica over and over again. In addition, with Arcadia Star Coral, um, this card got a whole, or Lyrica got a whole lot better too because you can go bounce a Lyrica to your hand, filter a coral out of your deck, Call Lyrica down, check top five, I think it's five or four, I don't remember how many, I just like go through the motions now. But yeah, so like between these two on the first stride you can get about two or three uses out of Lyrica. Or you can get guaranteed three uses out of Lyrica if the Lyrica's in your hand, and then if you have any other Lyrica's in your hand it gets even more insane. So yeah, that's why we're running first lesson Akari, and in terms of generic Bermuda decks it's probably the best starter in general. And then, weird trigger lineup, we're running uh, 16 heals, no, I'm kidding. Um, so yeah, four heals. If you want to use the sandy heal, all power to you. I just grabbed the first heal, I think this used to be a duo deck, I don't even know. So, my trigger lineup is heavily duo oriented, but that's fine. So yeah, running just four heals, go ahead and run sandy if you want to run sandy, but for the most part, the heals aren't too, too important. And then, six crit. So, yeah, because of weird trigger lineup. 6 crit, you see it enough, but at the same time, it's not too, too much. And then running 4 crook. This is super, super good in the deck. The multi-attacking is phenomenal. And again, it, like, crook, you can just abuse the heck out of Lyrica. Plus, it's a nice combo where you go Spica plus crook. And then that basically means you get a new column. So, good, good, good. And then just running 2 draws. This could actually probably get cut for maybe some more crits, but I found the draws do help every now and then because you do get to get to your combo pieces uh, at a fairly decent rate. Plus, on top of that, she throws herself into soul, and I do use cards that do rely on the soul. And I don't want to be soul blasting corals with uh, the grade one that I'm playing. So yeah, that is the grade zero line. Moving on to the grade ones. So we're running three copies of Cura. Now, there's a reason for this, is that this deck is fairly counter blast heavy sometimes. Eh, or I'm just insane. One of the two. Nope. Okay, might just be might just be me. me, me. Being insane, but like this deck can frequently build up a large soul, so I find that's not a terrible thing to be running three copies of Cura, or at least running Cura because you'll usually have like three, or two or three extra cards in soul. Like Frontier Star Coral will soul charge top card of your deck. Um, what's her name? Active Pink Lorana will soul charge a card, uh, and then Lyrica can throw a card in your soul. But like usually you'll have like a two or three extra cards in soul that you weren't going to be using for a coral name anyway so this is where Kira comes in handy is that she can just soul blast and then you'll have like a crap ton of cards in your soul either way so if you need the counter charge too she can soul blast uh, two extra corals to get you to counter charge there is the coral uh, there is the coral grade one support which does if it's bounced to your hand counter charge one if you put a uh, card with coral hand I just find that she works better in addition to that if you guys don't want to be running three Kira you can run it down you can run two instead and then play like three stride fodder instead. So, speaking of that, we're running two stride fodder. Again, this is kind of a stride reliant deck, so I don't know why I think it's a good idea to be running two. So, probably might be a good idea to cut a Cura for a third one. But overall, from the testing I've done with this deck, you do see it frequently enough and you're able to filter through enough corals that, like, you are able to fairly frequently stride. But I think it would probably be within my best interest to be running three. And then we are running two fresh star coral. Um, two is a good number. I found three. Four is definitely too much. One's definitely not enough. So I would say two or three is the nice sweet spot for this card. It's going to come down to how frequently you want to see uh, that off of your filter with Lyrica. So 
two is not bad because I do run four of the grade two, so that is six corals that she can target, and I am going to be using her skill like like multiple times in a turn, so that's fine. Um, if you do want to try to see her more frequently, again, you could cut Akira down <coughs> for her instead of uh, Shandi, so it's up to you. But I found that two is a good number, and like if you don't have a good ride, you can just ride her instead. Not the best ride target per se, because she doesn't really do anything on Vanguard, but still not terrible. And then running 4PG, the Unflipper, this deck does use Counter Blast. Like, yeah, <laughs> not really much else to say there. So you do want to run the Unflipping PG. I mean, yeah. It's not as Counter Blast heavy as, say, Reindeer or Shushu. So if you don't have the extra space to run the Unflipper, don't run the Unflipper if you don't have to. Or if you can't afford to. And then for Lyrica, I know people don't run for. I love seeing this card in my opening hand. I would abuse the heck out of her. Like, every single time I see her. So, like, when she's placed on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, you check top five, I think. Yep, top, you reveal the top five cards of your deck, grab a grade two or less coral from them, from among them, put it into your hand, and then from there, you take a card from your hand, throw it into your soul. And this is not a once per turn, so this means you can go and abuse the crap out of that effect. Which is awesome, because I will frequently go call, filter, call, filter, bounce, bounce, call, filter, call, filter. So, this card's a lot of fun to use, and I love seeing it in opening hand, which is why I run four. And then for the grade twos, we're running three Lorana. Uh, again, it's a backup. This is kind of a backup ride. What's also nice about these two is that if you get them into your soul, you can just use their skills to pull them out of your soul. And then they do stuff as well, like getting corals to your hand. So, there's that. So, Lorana, I run at three. She's an 11k attacker if you have a coral vanguard. And if she's in your soul, you counter blast one. Return to your hand, call her to rear guard, soul charge one, and then I think you give something 5k. Or no, sorry, 2k. Actually, no, that's Lyrica, but still. So, yeah, it's not bad. And then it's a good ride target if you don't have, uh, like, a grade 2 coral to use. So that's really good. And she's good to just throw into your soul if you just don't have any, like, uh, cards to use into your hand. So that's a, that's what's nice about Arcadia Star Coral is it just calls anything or puts anything from your deck into your soul. And then running three copies of Spica. Um, she's really good in this deck because the, like, I'm gonna keep going back to this, but like the multi-attacking and the call Lyrica check top four or check top five again is just ridiculous. So yeah, the multi-attacking works really well in this deck as well, which is nice, uh, especially with like Frontier since Frontier can call a new column. So yeah, she's good. She's one of the, it's one of the few Bermuda decks that I actually really like speak in. I, not a huge fan of it in Pacifica. Shushu, it's just not possible to use. Duos is still good. Uh, Prism is not bad. Reindeer, you probably would play four because like the amount of on-hit pressure you actually have in Reindeer is, in is in insane. So I guess it would go to an extent similar to Duos as well. Anyway, so you're running three uh, Shiny Star Coil. The reason why you're running three is because she has a good skill on Grade 2 or on Vanguard. And on top of that, she is... That's really the big one, is that she's got a good skill. So you do want to see her on Vanguard when you're on Grade 2. In addition to that, you want to play four, did I say three? You want to play four of her because um, you need the copies uh, for Lyrica again. Like, I'm basically trying to base this whole deck around Lyrica, I suppose. So, yeah. you have I have six targets for her, and if I drop this down to three, I have five, so it's tougher to get. I don't like Fresh Star Coral as much as I like Shiny, so I maxed out on Shiny and then played, like, two Fresh. But, again, I could go to three Fresh, depending on how I'm feeling, so... Yeah, she's a really good grade 2 raid, though. And then we get to the grade 3s. Uh, in my previous build, I was running 2 Loras, uh, 2 Aurora, and 3 Shangri-La. Now I'm running 4 and 4 because of Arcadia Star Coral, because she needs a Coral Heart. It's like, oh, feels bad. But yeah, so, yeah. Uh, for Shangri-La, this is your what you want to have on your grade 3. Usually, this is like a really bad choice for your grade 3. Right, so you usually want this thrown into your soul. You cry when you have to ride this, and the, but when this is cross-ridden, you're just like, nice, this is good. I also like the art of this more than the, art, the alternate art, so I may try to get more of that, but yeah. So yes, eight grade three corals, and then we move on to the G-Zone. So, strangely, I don't actually know my mentality here, but I just, like, didn't question anymore. We're in two Arcadia Star Corals. So she is flip of a copy of anything in your G-Zone, I believe. No, flip a copy of a coral in your G-Zone, bouncing it to your hand, search your deck for a card, throw it into your soul, and then she gets 10k, and then everything on your field gets 2k for every, for every card with coral in its name. Now you choose up to the same number of rear guards as the number of cards 
Okay, so you choose up to the num same number of regards as cards with coral in your soul and they gain 2k. So, yeah. Phenomenal first stride. I usually will use her and then flip up Frontier so that for next turn I can get Frontier's effect off. But, even then, uh, Arcadia is really good if you just need to get something into your soul. And I usually will first stride her because it's an okay first uh, stride dot. Not a huge power play first stride, but she can still hit big numbers, so you're swinging 36 on first stride. Again, it's, there's no guard restriction, so it's it can be PG'd, but it's still a fairly big number if they don't have a PG. So, yeah. And then, I don't know why I actually played the second one, so... Whatever, I guess you could say the second one is there as a Frontier, Star Coral, Illicit, Angie uh, target. But, yeah. First stride, she's a really good first stride. I like her. And then, like, kind of the heart and soul of the stride zone, or G-Zone. Oh my gosh, I can't talk today. I'm, like, so dead. So, four Frontier, Star Coral. You should be playing four, period, because her skill is absurd. She's basically, like, an Olivia for, for Corals. You bounce everything to your hand, or you bounce cards to your hand equal to the number of card or up to the number of cards with Coral in your soul. For every card that you bounce, she gets 5k. If the number of uh, cards with Coral in your G-Zone, or the number of Frontier Star Corals in your G-Zone is two or more that are face up, then uh, you draw a card, you choose two cards from your hand, call them to rear guards. It's stupid. And this thing can hit like really big numbers too, which is really nice. So, yeah, this is kind of the heart and soul of the G-Zone, just because of how good that skill is. And that's probably the original reason why I built this deck. Okay. So, while editing the video for the Coral deck profile, uh, the G-Zone kind of like got to the point where I was putting the Olivias down, and then nothing happened, then I jumped straight to the, and then the next video I jumped straight to the G-Guards, because apparently I didn't, ha I apparently thought I had the G-Zone finished up, so I, I don't actually know what's going on. So I'm just going to show the G-Zone real quick. So, for Olivia, um, for like everything that's like generic Bermuda for the most part, Olivia's kind of the best choice, so really nothing too much to say there. And then one Angie and one Priscilla. Um, Angie's kind of help with Link Joker matchup and you can't afford the Counter Blast to do it. And then Priscilla's the end game and you do flip enough stuff over in this G zone that you're able to get the GBA pretty quickly. So, yeah. And then we got uh, for G guards, one Sandy because Bermudas can get a big hand size due to returning stuff to their hand. Two Citroen to help with the Lyrica play and it helps with, it also helps uh, getting a big shield because she get, does gain 10k. And then Leona, because Leona, you don't really need to run Sandy in this case. Or not Sandy, um, Nasha, because she's just not as good as these four. So, yeah, future or past me can go ahead and take the video from here. Yay. Anyways, that was my Coral Deck profile. Uh, if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. Oh, no. And otherwise, uh, I will see you guys in the next deck profile, which will be Nubatama Hand Control. Good old nod back to like the original Nubatama decks that I was playing pre-Dominate. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then, yeah, like last minute thoughts on this deck is it's a ton of fun to play casually. And like it can, like I, I honestly believe that it could probably keep up with some other Bermuda decks too. It's I, I think it has that much potential just because of like the numbers and the multi-attacking that it can do. So yeah, again, any questions, any comments about this deck, leave them in the comment section below. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next deck profile, which will be Nubatama Hand Control.